and a welcome to Mando Bug Crafts episode 100. What? I should have hit this episode number a long time ago. We won't get into that. I have been making these videos now for five years. Blows my mind. Anyways, what's up? You might not know me. I'm Mando Bug. You can call me Mando for short or Amanda is my real name, whatever. Uh, and this is my channel here on YouTube where I occasionally, inconsistently, upload videos where I talk about the things that I'm making. And this is episode 100. And I'd like to start out with something I've learned. Oh my gosh, you guys. It's been a while since I've recorded, so there are just so many things that I've learned. And I think the biggest one it has to do with designing um, I've learned that for me as a designer there are two two main things that um, I've learned about myself so if you have ever thought about designing or try to dabble in it and struggle first of all don't quit keep doing it um, and then second of all you'll start to notice these things about yourself where I mean, it's good. It's a good thing. It's what's going to distinguish you and your designs from other people and their designs. But it's things. It's self awareness is hard. It's hard to be aware of you. Um, other people see it easily, but when it's hard to catch your own stuff. Um, first thing I noticed is I really, really, really struggle to design one hank solid color patterns. Well, even if it's variegated, it doesn't matter. If it's a one hank pattern and it's just one skein of it, I I don't, it's not my jam, it's not my thing, and I struggle. I am a two color, stripes, bigger project kind of person. So um, letting go of trying to design things that are like one hank, small, just letting that go. Not even gonna try anymore. I'm gonna go with the things that are easier for me. Um, you'll find that there's things that just come effortlessly and um, I'm trying to follow more of what feels effortless. So that's number one. Number two, um, I need to write the pattern down before I follow it. There, I said it. <laughs> uh, you, some people can design as they go, and I found that that just takes, too, that I just have to rip back too much. So um, I'll show you my hollow web in the whips later. I'm designing a new section for it, and I kind of had an idea where I wanted to go. I was going to branch off and modify the stitch pattern. And I just went for it with like 300 stitches, you know, in my row. And I went, went, went and realized my major mistake. 70 grams in. I had frog 70 grams of fingering weight yarn, which is like 300 yards. Because... I just kind of was going and doing what looked nice without realizing I increased way too much and I just had such, you know, when you have too many increases it doesn't lay flat. I had so much rippling going on because I increased a hundred more stitches than pattern increases. So um, had I kind of looked everything out, you know, mapped it out and written it out, that wouldn't have happened. So that is the second thing that I've learned about myself as a designer. This is for me. You are going to be completely different if you branch out and do this yourself. But that's kind of why I bring it up. You have to do what works for you. And the only way that you know what works for you is by trying and messing up. And sometimes you have to realize what doesn't work for you to narrow it down to what's left. Um, I guess that can kind of seem like, ah, oh, there's nothing that works for me. Don't quit. Just keep trying. You'll find what works for you. Uh, that's my something I've learned this week. Moving on to finished objects. So it's been a while since I've recorded, so I have finished a lot. Um, so I have an Etsy store, right? And I started doing polymer clay charms in there, but then I also opened up a listing for what I'm calling woolly fur. So woolly fur is where I blend wool with dog fur roughly a 50-50 percentage at a minimum. It can't be less than 50% wool. Um, and I started getting orders in this last month. It's like I had no orders and then all of a sudden, boom, I had two through Etsy and then two through uh, my mother-in-law knows some people. So they all came in at once. And so I had a very, very busy week of making woolly fur. So I 
did a bearded collie wool blend that was knit into a quick ombre hat and I can already tell you right now this video is gonna have a lot of photos in it because I don't have a lot of these items with me anymore but so I did actually did two bearded collie quick ombre hats for one order I did another order that was a border collie quick ombre hat and then the third order that I completed was just for the yarn and it was a golden doodle wool blend. So all of those orders were 50-50 blends. Um, the Bearded Collie and the Border Collie were pretty easy to work with and decently soft. The Golden Doodle was really hard to work with. So this fur was sent to me for, be, when the dog was sheared, sheared, the dog was shaved. I mean, terminology words, whatever. The dog was taken to the groomer. They shaved all the hair off of it, put it in a bag, and sent it to me. So um, it had very blunt cut ends, and it was very short in a lot of areas. And I learned that Golden Doodle is a very dense dog fur, and it, it kind of mats together easily. Even when just holding it in your hand, it will start to mat. It's very difficult to spin. I struggled with this order, but I pushed through, got it out, and she is an absolute love with the yarn. So, phew, I'm going to try testing with how I could have made that process easier. It's my first time. I don't have a lot of experience with this dog fur stuff, and there's not a lot out there on the web, so I trial by error, you know. So that happened, and um, so yeah, a lot of quick ombre hats and then that yarn. So then I also went, <laughs> I'll talk about dye day at the end of the video, but I was gifted some roving to dye at dye day, and I wanted to, you know, say thank you in some way to the lovely, lovely woman that gifted me the fiber. And so I ended up knitting her some mittens to go with a hat that someone else had gifted her so they would match. So the bobble hat, I've knit it before. It's super popular. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I put that chart onto Susan B. Anderson's Waiting for Winter Mittens. It was not easy. It was difficult. I don't recommend doing this. But I did, and I knit that up for her and gifted it to her as a thank you. Um, yeah, I knit it, ripped it, knit it, ripped it, finally got it, knit, wrote down all my notes so that my mother-in-law can make a pair for herself if she wants later. Um, but yeah, so I made those. I also made a bobble hat for an order, and I'm currently working on another one. I'll show you that in whips. Uh, what else? Oh! This massive project, check this out. This thing is huge. Oh, I should go dance with it. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the Halloween countdown calendar by the left-handed crocheter. And, you know, I'll link everything in the show notes below. But this is a countdown calendar for Halloween. I'm going to get up and see if I can fit the whole thing in the frame. I don't know if that's possible. It's... It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to based on her pictures. They were from so far away that it looked like a nice little wall hanging. This is a nice big wall hanging, but the kids really, really enjoyed it. Alright, I'm as far away from the camera as I can get because my room's not very wide. So I'll try to show you as the best I can. It's got three loops to hang on a dowel here. And then it's a graph gan in the back. And it goes all the way to the bottom, and uh, I've got some pumpkins down here. But these numbers, right? I don't even know if you can hear me back here, so I'm going to come back up. So this is a graph GAN, and these are all pockets that had to be sewn on to the graph GAN afterwards, and these are all the windows that are numbered. So you have the one at the top, and you make Gus the ghost and Gus goes in the first window on the first day of October and as the days pass just like a normal countdown calendar you're just gonna keep moving down all the way to the front door which is Halloween and that's how the kids know it's time to go trick-or-treating and um, the numbers she did hers in foam I think she hot glued foam numbers on 
but I couldn't find any foam numbers and I wasn't about to cut that many numbers. So someone else that did the crochet along with her as well, they used Tulip glow-in-the-dark paints. And so that's what I did. I used glow-in-the-dark paint for my numbers, which, you know, it kind of looks like gluey, uh, but they glow in the dark and it was really cool. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is when I roll this up and put it in the shed for next year, if it gets really hot in the summer, I'm worried about the paint melting. So when I roll it up, I'm actually going to put wax paper down just in case. Because uh, this was a lot of work, a lot of crocheting, a lot of sewing, but it did use up a lot of my acrylic stash. I only had to buy, I think, two skeins of Red Heart. This is all Red Heart. I only had to buy two skeins to finish it off, and I think it took five out of my stash. So, perfect project for stash busting if you've got the colors you need, which, hello, it's Halloween, you know I had those colors. <laughs> um... So yeah, I really enjoyed this project. I'm so glad that I made it. And the kids, they had such a blast. Every morning they'd wake up and be like, is it time to move the ghost? But then of course my daughter, she's almost four, and you know, the gears are ticking in there. She would take the ghost and put it in the door and be like, mom, what what happened? The door, the, is it Halloween? <laughs> I'm like, no, Emily, come on. So that was fun um, and it was a fun little crochet along the left-handed crochet I'd never followed any of her patterns before uh, but when I saw that I was browsing kind of like the most popular patterns on Ravelry and I saw that up there and I immediately jumped on it and she hosted the crochet along in a in her Facebook group which was it wasn't bad it was my first time doing a crochet along in a Facebook group and I don't like, I don't know how I felt about it. It was nice to be outside of Ravelry, but also it wasn't very chattery the way that it was set up and the way that Facebook works. I don't, I wouldn't just see it in my feed. I'd have to know to go into the group and go looking for chatter and whatnot. But she did do a giveaway every week for more of her patterns and she has several really cute patterns. I didn't win a giveaway, but I did end up buying a pattern she released during the crochet along for Emily. <sighs> Lesson learned. Don't let your child hand dye hand spun if you don't want them to pick... How do I even word that? So, <laughs> at dye day, I let Emily dye some of my hand spun because I didn't have any undyed commercially spun yarn, but I had undyed hand spun yarn with me f that was processed from a fleece so that makes it even more uh, special so I let her dye a Hank pink and I thought I'd make her a hat but she did not want a hat she wanted a cat so I never thought in a million years that I would be processing wool from a fleece hand spinning it and then crocheting it into a toy but I let Emily dye it I felt like it was hers, and it needed to be what she wanted it to be. And, of course, the one hank she dyed was not enough, so we had to dye another hank of handspun. So that's two hanks of handspun that was gonna go in my sweater that is now a cat. At least it's a cute cat, right? So this pattern is called Cats in Hats by the left-handed crocheter, and it had a hat, but I don't know where it is. My kids room is a mess right now and I did not feel like cleaning it to find the hat. So here is just the cat. Um, I did overstuff the head. Uh, I was trying to follow the pattern you know as close as possible and a lot of amigurumi, amigurumi, however you say it, the toys, they tell you to stuff 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 it because over time the polyfill breaks down, which is true. I don't know if I have... I don't know where the elephant is. I'll show you the elephant sometime. I have an elephant toy from when I was a baby and this, the polyfill has been broken down so much that it's like, it feels empty. So, it's true, but for now, it's just like the neck is overstuffed and that makes the head look like it's a funny shape. But you use embroidery floss for some whiskers, and I have issues with keeping the threads separate. They want to go back together, so um, that is cute. 
and Britta the nose on, you use some safety eyes, and I, in her pictures, hers kind of had like these stripes, but it looks like it was maybe painted on, or maybe pastel, chalk pastel, I don't know, it didn't say in the pattern how to achieve that effect, which I was kind of bummed about, um, so I took some of my fleece and did my best to needle felt some accent pieces, so I've got this little white bit on the top I just needle felted right in and then a little round belly that I just needle felted in. Um, so I did also use some plain white hand spun as accents for the paws and feet which again her samples had you know color changes like on the ear tip and the feet and paws but the pattern didn't say when to change colors if you wanted to which also kind of bummed me. So I just kind of guessed, but um, I was kind of looking for, I, I guess I expected, for a pay for pattern, I expected more detail on like her samples. Like, oh, I did this to this one, this is how you can achieve that effect. But anyways, I was able to make it work. And then there's the little tail, and I did white on the tip of the tail as well. So Emily loves her cat. I think she named it, but I don't remember what she named it. Um, and it does have like a little party hat that I used, like a, that, I don't know if you remember, I think it was in my last video, I did some hand spun where, I, I don't think that was in the last video, never mind. If I find a picture, I'll put one in here. Um, it was some hand spun that I did of three different strands of each, it was a three ply, each color was a different color. Each. Each ply was a different color. I, let me just drink some more coffee so I can do the words. It's 6 a.m. here. I realized if I'm ever going to record a video, I need to get up before the kids. So I've been up since 5, and it's now 6, and this is my first cup, so. Okay, so you may have noticed that my daughter loves pink. I knit her a hat that is very pink. So this hat is really cool, you guys. Uh, a lot of people that I work with um, have been knitting this hat and, well, co-workers and people that come into the shop. And it's funny because the picture on Ravelry, I would have never picked this as a pattern to knit, but seeing a bunch of them in person and hearing people talk about them, I absolutely love this hat. So this hat is called the Marikai hat and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I think it's put out by Hedgehog Fibers. So why I love this hat is because, I mean, well one, it's simple and basic and easy to wear, but two, it's fingering weight held double. So it's knit at a DK gauge, but it's a great way to use fingering weight scraps. So I generally have at least 30 to 40 grams of yarn left over after I knit socks, which is perfect because this hat calls for three colors and you don't use much of them at all. So, and you really could, you don't have to follow the color changes to a T. You could just knit until you run out and switch to another color. You could use four, five, or six colors depending on how small your scraps were. So it's, um, I've heard the technique referred to as melange. Is that, I think maybe that's how you say it. Um, where you have your two strands of fingering weight yarn and then you drop one and you pick up a new one. So this is two strands of, I believe, I don't want this to get blown out, two strands of, I think it was Pagewood Farm that I got from Eat Sleep Knit. It was one of their discontinued, super discounted yarns. Um, that's two strands. And then a, from here to here is one strand of the Pagewood and then one strand of, I believe this is Manos del Uruguay Alegria. I think something carnival. I'll link everything, of course, if you want to know for sure. But it's one strand of each from here to here. And then you drop that page wood and you go to two strands of the Manos. And then from here to here is one strand monos, one strand of, this is hedgehog fiber sock in the zephyr colorway, and then the crown is two strands of zephyr. So it's this really nice fade that's achieved not by stripes but by dropping one strand 
and picking up a new strand. And I did modify it. It's only, it's one size only, it's one adult size. But you can take the gauge and modify that to whatever size you're trying to knit, of course, if you don't mind doing a little bit of math. I will say, it did seem to me that the gauge that's written in the pattern doesn't match the finished size of the hat. This could be due to blocking, but um, it did throw me off because I took the gauge that they had in the pattern, modified it to fit my daughter's head, which is closer to 18 inches, and the cast on was about the same. And I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on? So um, you might run into that problem too. So I did actually have to, I, I, I took stitches off based on what they recommended you cast on versus their gauge because I don't, I don't know that that was accurate. I could be misspeaking, but um, that is a little bit of an issue I ran into. But yeah, so the hat's a little, a little big for her head, but it's definitely something she can grow into, which is perfect. And it's pink, which she loves. So Marikai, free pattern on Ravelry. Try it out to use up your fingering weight scraps. What else? I did finish the cutest crochet doily, which I have on display at work, so I don't have it with me right now. But it was called Boo, and yeah, I loved everything about this pattern. The doily is the cutest ever. The pattern was really easy to follow, and I just, I love everything about it. So that is also a free pattern on Ravelry. I know Halloween is over, but you know, you could always, if if you're like me, you would make it now anyways. So <laughs> I want to let you know about that. She also, that same designer, Marsha Glasner, she also has a pumpkin doily that needs to be made. I will be making that one in the future as well. And my kitchen is pumpkin themed, so that one will be displayed year round. Not like I wouldn't display the ghost year round anyways. Uh, and then <laughs> the final finished object that I have are these awesome socks awesome socks awesome socks so these socks are a new pattern that was just released last week by holly of pacific north knits and they are called the tohola socks so i'll show you up close i test knit these as i wonder it's not going to focus on the sock because my face is here so maybe if i just cover my face um I test knit these socks for her about a month ago and she has gotten the pattern uh, tech edited and it is now available. I knit these socks using Cattails yarn in the Christmas Time is Here colorway and this is on her alpaca sock base which has got um, merino alpaca nylon. I believe that's all correct. So let me tell you about these socks. <laughs> So Cat of Cattails Yarn, um, she started dyeing, I think it's almost been a year now, but when she first started dyeing, she sent me and Holly and a couple other people that she knew yarn so we could kind of, you know, test it out for her, you know, get feedback on the bases and her dye job and all sorts of stuff like that. I mean, it's a good idea when you're first starting out to let people try your product out and get some feedback. So this is one of the hanks of yarn that she sent me and also sent to Holly. Holly designed these socks and I told her, I was like, well, I'll test them for you. And I had the exact same yarn, so why not? So we both have a pair in the exact same colorway. Um, and we got to talking <laughs> and we we're like, you know what would be fun is if we put together a kit. So Holly designed the socks, Cat dyed the yarn. Kendra of Hooked by Happenstance sewed the most gorgeous, it's like a coastal Christmas themed bag, and then I made a polymer clay charm. So this whole kit is kind of a Christmas time in Tohola. So Tohola is a coastal city in Washington, and that's what inspired Holly's sock design. And then a Christmas time, Christmas time is here, is the colorway, so the colorway was inspired by a Charlie Brown's Christmas, but it also kind of has a coastal feel to it with its blues and it's got some like slight greens in it. Um, so it's a Christmas time in Tohola. So Kendra's zippered 
project bag that has a handle, which I need more project bags with handles, you guys. I'm underestimating just how important the handle is <laughs> when you get up to go. It's just so much better when you have a handle. Anyways, it's got a gorgeous, I can insert some pictures. It's got a gorgeous like two fabrics on the outside and a lovely gentle one on the inside. And I actually have one of her bags where I have her bingo bag, which is a, it's a, well, I might as well talk about the bingo bag since I'm bringing it up. Um, I meant to just say her bags are super high quality. Um, this one especially because it's a bingo bag. So on her channel, um, she's got some fun games that she plays and this is one that you can play along with her. This is Let Peach Let Play Bingo and she made bingo bags to go with the game. So the bag is actually patchworked uh, bingo squares. So, um, but anyways, the whole point was to share that like the zipper installation, which zippers suck. Trust me, I've made bags, I know, and if you have one of my bags, you may know I was not always so good at putting in zippers. But, um, I, I finally, side note, I finally realized that I was putting them in backwards. That's another thing that I learned between last video and this one. I was using the zipper foot backwards, so instead of sewing to the outermost part of the zipper, I was sewing to the innermost part of the zipper, which means sometimes the zipper would catch. So, side note. But she... Is a pro she does not do that um, and this just they're just really they're really well-made bags so and this one especially is has an extra pocket inside because it's a notions pouch but then also she put an extra pocket so that when you put like markers I've got a little clay peachlet head I made for the free bingo space but like if you put little pins to mark your spaces it doesn't it won't snag anything because you've got this divider here you could put anything that would possibly snag in the back I didn't mean to talk about that, but you gotta go with the flow. <laughs> so, Kendra's beautiful bags. So, so you get her bag, you get a digital code for Holly's sock pattern, and you get a hank of cattail, cattails yarn in the Christmas Time Is Here colorway on the alpaca sock base, and then you get my polymer clay progress keeper. So, because of the theme of our kit, the, a Christmas, <laughs> a Christmas in Tahola. <laughs> I want to say I keep saying a Christmas time is here. That's not right. Um, Christmas time is here is the sock, right? And a Charlie Brown Christmas, the most memorable thing to me about the movie is Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. He's got this sad, dinky little tree with the one little red ornament on it. So that is where I got my inspiration for my clay charm. So, oh, my lighting's horrible. It is 6 a.m. You've got to forgive me. Um, there we go. So it's just one little red Christmas ball, and it comes on a lobster clasp. Um, I've considered getting bigger lobster clasps for my polymer clay charms. I think I'm going to start carrying two sizes because this size is really good for sock knitting, but I found that it's kind of harder to attach to like DK worsted weight and above. So I think I'm going to start offering two size lobster clasps, but this charm will stay exclusive to this kit. Um, we made, <clears throat> we made a really limited quantity because it was so much stuff together. Um, so I think there's only a couple of them left last time I checked. So if you want one of our kits, um, definitely go check out Kat's Etsy store. She had all the yarn. We figured it was easier to just send everything to her. So it's cattailsyarn.etsy.com where you can go to get a Christmas time into Tahola. Christmas into Tahola socket. Can't even say the name of our kit. Um, this Christmas kit. Uh, I'll also link it below. But yes, I had a fun time putting that together with them. Um, I really, I really like all of the work that they put out in them as individuals. So <laughs> it was really fun working with them for this. And um, I hope that we do more kits in the future. But yes, speaking of polymer clay, real quick, because it's staring me right in my eye. Right in my eye. Um, my third charm came out, and I don't know that I've shared that on the, in the podcast. I, 
I lose track when I don't record consistently like this. I don't remember what I have and haven't showed. So forgive me if I've showed this, but I don't think I did. Um, I was doing yarn and charm kits with Cat of Cattails Yarn. And <clears throat> excuse me, and our third and final Mythical Creatures Yarn and Charm Kit has come out. And this one is hands down my favorite charm that I've made for these kits. And the yarn is absolutely gorgeous. I don't have the yarn with me, but I can insert photos. Um, it's funny because this time around, she actually changed what she had thought she was going to do to match the charm. So the first time out, the Mermaid Song, her yarn kind of contrast the charm. Second time out, I matched my charm to her yarn. This time out, she matched her yarn to my charm. So, um, I'm telling you what, if you're a maker and you've never done collabs, I highly recommend you do it. They're really fun. It expands your mind as a creative person. And, um, I've just, I've really been enjoying the, doing the collabs. So, the charm is this adorable, uh, dragon eye. And I just love the way that they turned out. So, can, I'm trying not to get any shadows on it. So, I used a gold clay. It's a gold glittery clay. You can see the color better on the back. But I also used kind of like an alcohol ink to give it a tonal effect. And then the eye, I actually made myself. I printed some eye images. And then I domed resin over the top. I domed UV resin over the top, cured it, then I sculpted it around the clay, and because I was, I made the resin first, I was really worried about baking the resin in my oven, so I ended up getting a small toaster oven for my clay charms now, and it was my first time using it, and it wasn't like a, it was an inexpensive toaster oven. I didn't realize that the way this toaster oven works is it just blasts heat into the oven until it's at temp and then it just holds the heat and then if it loses heat it will blast it again until it gets up to temp and hold it so I put the, all of the charms for our kits in my little new toaster oven turned it on and it blasted well that blasting heat actually burnt those horns it burnt all the tips became black and I was like and it started smoking and I freaked out because if you burn clay the fumes are questionable um, most clay says it's not toxic and when you bake it you're it's not gonna produce harmful fumes but there are warnings about burning it so um, I moved the toaster outside so that any fumes would go outside and not stay in the house. And I, do, I put tin foil over the top to help protect the charms, but I've now learned that when baking in that toaster oven, to let it kind of preheat. So turn it on, let it blast the heat, and once those lamps turn off, then I put my charms in and reset my timer. Uh, I did, I was able to fix the charms. Obviously the horns aren't black anymore. I just painted over them with white and then shaded them with chalk. And then, of course, I put a whole UV resin layer over the top of everything. So it created more work, but it did not harm the charms permanently. It was fixable. Um, so I really, really love these guys. And um, I do believe there are some available in Kat's shop. So these charms will stay exclusive to the kits and in her shop. So, boy, that's a lot of... Oh, technically I have one more finished object, too, because I'm like looking it right in the face. I didn't write it down, but dye day. I went to dye day and I've already spun up one of the braids of fiber that I dyed. And it's not in pretty hank form because I was going to start a project with it. I did start the project, but I wasn't happy with it, so I frogged it. So, um, this is some three ply, chain ply, hand spun from a braid of fiber I dyed that I call I called it campfire and I can insert some pictures of me dyeing it and what it looked like before I spun it and the project that I started I was gonna you can see I have two cut balls because I was cutting balls I was striping um, I was gonna use this is the Jacob that I've been hand processing and spinning I thought that it went so well together but 
I started designing a scarf and I wasn't happy with it and realized I didn't have enough yarn to make it as wide as I wanted to. Nothing's more sillier to me than like a super skinny scarf. I just, that looks just weird. So <laughs> it got frogged. It's probably going to become a cowl because I know it's enough for a cowl. So um, yes, I finished that. And actually because I see this sitting here too, <laughs> I remember last time I was telling you guys about doing some solar dyeing. I was solar dyeing small amounts of fleece in a mason jar and I had done the periwinkle color. Um, this is the, so, I, I, I was calling it the wrong name last time. I think I was calling it steel gray, but it's actually just silver gray. And this, I ended up having leftover dye in the jar after um, it was exhausted because this rinsed clear and didn't change in color. So this was its full concentration of dye. It doesn't get any darker than this on its own. This is Jacquard Acid Dye Silver Gray on just a small hank of hand spun. So, yes. Let's move on to works in progress. Actually, but first coffee. All right, works in progress. Let me grab this one. So, this is gonna be really loud. Or noisy, probably. So, I am crazy, and I, I really enjoy knit alongs and crochet alongs, and I really like community based crafting where people who are making similar things get together and chat about making those things. So, I mean, that is why I do this is to. I'm not a super social person, and if I am gonna be social, I want it to be about the things I enjoy doing. So, that's why I make these videos, that's why I like crochet alongs, I like to talk about these, what I love with people who also love the same thing. I'm sure you're the exact same way, it's not surprising. But that gets me into trouble with all of these knit alongs, crochet alongs, I join a bunch at once and don't finish them in time. I finished the Halloween countdown calendar after the crochet along had ended, but only by a week late. So that's not too bad. This one I started and I was keeping up pretty well, but I got thrown off by the Halloween countdown calendar and then I also hosted a crochet along for my hollow web shawl and that just, I'll talk more about that later, but that just threw everything out the window. But this was a mystery knit along that is no longer a mystery. I think it started in September and um, it is a pay for pattern by Kyle of Kyle William Designs and he is just a talented color work designer. If you haven't seen his stuff and you like color work, go look up Kyle William patterns on Ravelry. They are just amazing and if you ever get a chance to see a sample in person or take a class from him, oh my gosh, amazing. So. I say take a class from him because I work with him and uh, I've got to peek in on some of his classes and they're, they're just absolutely amazing. And he's also an international teacher so he's taught all over the place. Uh, but his designs are just amazing. And this is, this I think is through clue two of his knit along. And this is two strands of... Um, not held, it's not held double. It's two different colors of Zitron Lifestyle. Comes in these little balls. And it's a sport weight yarn. I'm not sure what size needles I'm knitting this on, but it had a decently tight gauge. And so the border here, it's kind of, it's a rolled border, but it was cast on with a bigger needle and I think I didn't have a tight enough tension. So mine is kind of rippling, but I think when I get it all said and done. I think it's going to block out just fine. And then it's just this gorgeous, like, I don't even know what you call this, but I love it because it's so gothic. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's hard to tell in the video, but it is a light gray and a very deep plum purple. Actually, it's even deep, like the deepest plum you could possibly get to where it almost looks black. Let's see if I can set it. I mean, that's pretty close to color accurate, but the black, it, I think it looks a little black on screen and it's a little more purple in person, but I'm obviously, cause it's a cowl, I'm in the middle of a row, but I just love it. I love it so much. I just haven't been working on it. So, 
And the Zitron's colors are numbers, so I'll link the project page. You can see what color numbers they are if you are interested. And then um, I've also been working a little bit on the skirt for Emily. This bag, you guys, this is why I realized I need more bags with handles. I've been using this bag, and it has a handle, and I love it. Now, this bag, just, I can't believe sometimes how amazing and generous people are. So this bag was actually gifted to me, which I just, I was in shock. To the point where I was like, did she mean to gift that to me, or did I get so excited she just gave it to me? Has that ever happened to you? I mean, I think I was so surprised that I was thinking that I might have thought that I accidentally convinced her to give it to me. <laughs> but I really, no, I don't think I did that. Um, because when she came in with the bag, she had it behind her back. And she's like, I have something for you. I don't think you can misconstrue that. Um, but I, it was a lovely, lovely woman I met in one of my classes. And I think it was one of my beginner crochet classes that I taught her in. I can't remember. Uh, sometimes when you teach a bunch of classes um, and in a row, they it gets fuzzy. Like you remember the people, but not necessarily which class they were in. Um, and we must have been talking about bags, but she totally surprised me. She was like, yeah, you know, I wanted you to have this. I, you know, when you buy fabric, it makes more than one bag. So... Um, and it is, it's amazing quality, and it's just an amazing bag, and there's pockets inside. I can't even show it to you. There's little pockets inside. I, I absolutely love it, and I can't, I was just so shocked when she gifted it to me, and it was very, very sweet, and I've definitely been getting use out of it. Um. But the skirt for Emily. So this is cattails, yarn, and unicorn poop. It was the second Mythical Creatures collab that we did. And Emily wanted a dress. And I said, girl, you ain't getting a dress out of one skein of fingering weight yarn. So I ended up pairing it with this, which is almost gone. So we're going to see what happens here with this skirt. <laughs> I thought, well... I don't want it to be too blocky. When you do double crochet with variegated yarn, you get these blocks of colors because they're tall stitches. So I ended up starting to do single crochets to get long color, like long pieces of cut, long stretches of color out of the yarn. And then I paired it with this, I think it's called Brigitte, Brigitte, Brigitte. It looks like kind of maybe Bridget. I don't know. It's a time, a wheel of time colorway, and it's getting completely blown out. Maybe if I hold it back here, it's gonna, not really. Uh, <laughs> but as you can tell, I've used a lot of it, and not that much unicorn poop. It's really interesting sometimes. I surprise myself when I start going um, without really a pattern in mind. So this skirt is actually mostly yellow at this point. So, the waistband is unicorn poop, and it's worked in um, just like a strip from a short, it's worked this way. <laughs> Boy, maybe it's not a good idea to record this early in the morning, but better to record than not? I don't know, you guys let me know what you think. <laughs> so, it's worked this way, back and forth. So you get this striping effect on the unicorn poop and you get some stretch, right? This is, I believe, single crochet. Oh yeah, I discovered if you single crochet short little strips like this, it's stretchy because I tried to make that tank top, if you remember, and the strap, I made the strap that way and the strap was stretchy and I was like, that is not what you want. But in a waistband, it is what you want. So I made a long strip and at the end, I did some chains to make button holes because I thought, okay, if I put a couple holes in the back, it can fit her for a while. But I quickly realized you can only do that for like two sizes because then it won't be long enough. The kids get, well, it depends on the kid, but my daughter gets taller before she gets wider, so I didn't need that many holes, but you live and you learn. I apparently have to learn things the hard way, so whatever. But I'm gonna, like, 
some holes is not going to hurt anything. Although it does fit her on the tightest hole right now, which means there's a lot of overlap in the back. So I did, um, I crocheted flat up until, I don't know, I did a couple inches because I figured I didn't want the gap to be too low. But you know on skirts that are buttoned in the back, there's that little bit, usually there's like a little zipper there or maybe a button shut. So I crocheted flat for a little while and then I joined in the round. So what will happen is, also this will help if she had hips, but she, she's a kid so she doesn't. It will help her get it on without a struggle and then it will button shut to stay on. But because of how far over the button will go, there's going to be a little bit of overlap here in the back. But I think because this is fingering weight, it's, so, it's such a thin fabric, it'll be okay. Um, after the waistband, <clears throat> I did one row, just kind of working into the edge of each single crochet row. But after that row, I went and I massively increased. I did two stitches in every stitch all the way around, so it gets this really nice ripple effect. So it's a really nice ripple skirt, but it takes a lot of yarn because of that. So I'm only halfway down her skirt length, and you can see I've got... Um, the yellow Brigitte <laughs> color and then the rainbow poop and so you can see what I mean I'm doing double crochets in yellow but only single crochets in unicorn poop so I get those long running strips of color and I really like the way that works versus the blocky bits of color but I am gonna run out of yarn I think I can probably get maybe two more sections of yellow after this one, which is near the length that I want the skirt to be. So then I'm gonna have to go ham on the rainbow poop at the end. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to change up the stitch pattern. I can't just do fingering weight single crochet for forever. Um, this is a fingering weight project, so it's taking a long time, but because it's nothing but doubles and singles, it's great for like VKNs, you know, virtual knit nights or I took it to the bar. Let me tell you about taking this to the bar. So I don't go to the bar. I, my, is that surprising? I'm not someone that goes to the bar. Um, I don't drink a lot. I will enjoy a beverage here and there. A glass of wine, uh, sometimes Angry Orchard with a little bit of Fireball. Uh, you know, if I go out, usually a whiskey sour is my drink of choice, but I don't go have 10 of them or anything. You know what I mean? I'm not a bar person. But uh, my husband's cousin, hit her wife, is an amazing singer, and she goes out to karaoke night, and I love to hear her sing, and it's nice to get out of the house and get together with people who are not your normal people, and, you know, get to know my family better, too, um, so, because usually my husband's aunt goes as well. So they've been inviting me out and I've been going and having a great time, but you are just kind of sitting there having a drink, listening to karaoke, casual conversation, but not too loud because people are singing. You don't want to be rude. So the first time I went, I didn't bring anything because I didn't know how it was going to go. But I knew the second time out, I'm like, I'm going to bring something. So I brought this skirt because it's mindless. But boy, there was someone in our group that was super uncomfortable with it. Um, and Josh was laughing because out of all the projects I work on, like, this is the brightest in-your-face project. It, like, it almost looks kind of circus-y, like how bright that yellow is with the rainbow. Um, I'm like, it's for my four-year-old, almost four-year-old daughter. Like, really? Like, whatever. So some people thought it was really cool, but one person was like... Sh I mean, she was a jokester, too, so I know she wasn't, like... It wasn't a personal attack, but she seemed uncomfortable. She was like you need to get out more, like, put that away, what can I do to get you to stop crocheting, I'm gonna order her more drinks, da, da, da. and I was just like, dude, so just let me do my thing, just let me do my thing, um, but she couldn't, she couldn't let it go, she kept making comments throughout the whole night, um, and I don't, like I said, I don't feel personally attacked by it, she wasn't doing it to, like, make fun of me or be mean, although there was kind of those slight undertones, um, but it was just interesting, um, you forget when you hang out with people who love what you love, it feels normal. Like, yeah, you just take your stuff out. And then when you get around people who are uh, from a different completely group, they're like, 
what are you doing weirdo and I'm like oh yeah I am weird that's right I forgot <laughs> you know what I mean but I'm not ashamed of it I kept crocheting anyways until my hands got tired and then I stopped um, so yes a little story about that um, this is my own design and making up as I go I don't know if it's something I'll actually release I don't know that it's something that people would want a fingering weight skirt for their daughters maybe maybe not but I don't have any like I'm not pushing myself to finish it or get it out but I am liking it and I think Emily will really like it too um, the other things I'm working on is my hollow web shawl so for the month of October um, Makers Mercantile where I work hosted a crochet along for my shawl featuring schmutzarella yarns and uh, I'll show you the original. You may have seen this, you may not have seen this. This is the original shawl um, that I designed in 2016 and uh, I absolutely love it. But I absolutely love it in black and orange. So Nancy of Schmutzarelli Yarns, she crocheted up a version in Knox which is a black colorway of hers, and you must be Weasley, which is a Harry Potter reference, to her orange. And I can insert a picture you can, so you can see it, and it is just so Halloween spectacular, which, of course, is what I had in mind when I designed the project. Um, and so for the crochet along, she put together some kits, <clears throat> but I kind of went my own direction, and I... She, she, she did put together a black and purple kit, but I went with her mini skein set. So this is the progress on my current version of the hollow web shawl. But as I mentioned earlier, I'd gotten a lot farther. Let me show you. This is how much I frogged. Frogged quite a bit. Um, and I don't know if I can even show you. It's going to be hard to see because when I frogged it, I had to wind it into a ball. And so it's not in a cake anymore. But the purple I'm using is a, she calls them her morphing minis. They're a mini skein pack. It's six mini skeins that fade very slowly. I bought Mr. Plum's Demise. So there's um, the ghost of Mr. Plum, which goes from a really light purple to a medium purple. And then the demise goes from the medium purple to a dark purple. So <clears throat> you can see at the top, that's that medium purple. And as I continued in the solid sections, it continued to fade. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's hidden inside the ball, obviously, but this is what was left. So you can see just how dark the fade gets. This is Nox, the black that I'm using in the lace. And this is part of the fading minis. So once this is done, I'll dip into this if I need to. But because the mini skein packs are 150 grams, I wasn't going to get to this dark purple if I just did the pattern to its original size. So I decided to add a new, two new sections actually, because it's, sorry, I've got the, something in my throat, obviously. Um... Because it's got the solid and then the lace, I decided to add another solid and lace. So this is the third and fourth sections from the original pattern, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the sixth and the seventh section from the original pattern. There's only eight in the original pattern. So instead of putting the border on, I'm putting on another lace section and then another solid and then the border, which means all of the math. So the struggle with this design is that it it's kind of a semicircular. So when I designed it, I want my thought process was I want it to be semicircular. But the way that I designed it, it ended up being a little bit more of a U shape, which actually turns out in your favor because it actually stays on your shoulder because it's not flat. It doesn't like fold up weird in the back. It curves on your neck which ends up being more beneficial. It looks a little silly um, on its own because you can see it dips, uh, but that was like a side note. <laughs> uh, these solid sections, they 
I used half of a traditional circle increase. So with crochet, when you increase flat, circularly, you usually do a set number of increases spread out. So this one in particular has six increases in the half. So let's say like if you're gonna do a double crochet circle flat, you'd probably do like 12 double crochet in a magic ring and then you know you do two in one and then you'll do one double crochet, two in the next, and those increases fan out, but you end up doing 12 increases around throughout the rest of your project. This is half, this is six. So you end up with about 30 increases per solid section, right? That's where I run into my issues and you have to kind of pay attention in the pattern because each of these lace sections is a different multiple. I don't remember what this one is or this one, but I know that my last one is a multiple of 15 plus one, my lace border. So I needed to make sure that I could get to a multiple of 15 plus one after adding my middle section. I also um, have to do some kind of increases in my lace section so that when you get to the next solid section, you're about where you should be in the increase in size, right? That's where I messed up. I put in my spiders, which I took out because I wanted to modify the stitch pattern a little bit more to make the spiders stand out even more. So I'm going to be putting in a lace section that looks like a string of spiders. Oh, I also put them in with head up, but I realized they look cooler with the head down. So <laughs> I'm flipping it and modifying it a bit to make the spiders stand out more in this lace section. And then also what happened was um, I increased way too much because I wasn't paying attention. So that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the video where I really need to write everything out and do all of the math in advance because apparently I really suck at winging it. So um, I had increased like a hundred extra stitches and it rippled like crazy and so I ripped it all out. I'm going to be making the changes, doing the math in advance, should work perfectly after that, but as you know with these larger shawls, once you get this far into a shawl, like I've got, like I said, like 300 stitches right now in a row, once you get that far in a project, it's a lot of, it takes a lot of yarn to keep going and it takes a long time to finish a row. So it might be a little while before I finish this, but um, I'm really excited to be putting an extra section on it. I do know a lot of people that have made the pattern had told me that they wished it was a little bigger. So it's going to be quite a bit bigger, um, at least six to seven inches deeper than the original pattern, which gives you some wiggle room because this pattern is fingering weight yarn with a 4.0 millimeter hook. So it's a decently loose gauge, which some people struggle to do. So um, if your gauge is tighter, you won't have that significantly smaller of a shawl if you go for the larger size, which this is a pay for pattern. It's six dollars on Ravelry. I was offering half off during the crochet along, so some people did get it at a decent price. And when the new size is finished, that's going to be updated to the original pattern, so it's included at no extra cost. Also, it's worth noting that that pattern is both written and charted. Uh, the double crochet sections are not charted because you don't need that, but all of the lace is charted, which makes it super easy to follow. There are optional beads. They're kind of hard to see in this one because my black, they're black beads on black yarn, but I kind of like the way that that looks. It hides it, but it gives it a bit of glitter in person. You can see on my original sample, um, you can see the beads a lot more because they are contrasting beads. Let's see. Oh, I guess you can't see them that much more. So yeah, that is my only other work in progress. So moving on to design time. My foot's asleep and also I need to grab the hat. The oh yes hat. I shared this last time. I do remember sharing it last time. The oh yes hat is now available. It's a $4 pattern on Ravelry. I had it professionally tech edited and I had the best experience of Emily of Fiat Fiber Arts experience of experience with um, it was 
I had a really nice time working with her on this pattern, especially because of how uncomfortable I felt with how different it was and she was able to help me out a ton. Uh, the way that I designed this pattern, there are several special stitches. Special in the fact that you may not have done them before, or they're just pretty uncommon. So, um, it's mostly in the decreases, and I made video tutorials for each of the special, special stitches, but I messed up. Another lesson learned. Um, this was my first sample, but I wanted one for me in a dark color, so I got the dark yarn, which is horrible for tutorials. I wasn't even thinking about it, but I didn't want to buy more yarn and make another hat, which I'm probably going to have to anyways now. Uh, so I did all my stitch tutorials with the dark yarn. You can see it. It's just not ideal, and I won't be doing that again, but uh, as I crocheted this hat, I crochet... I filmed the tutorials are on this channel and they're linked in the pattern so um, when you get to you know link double crochet puff stitch two together you can watch the video if you're unsure how to do it um, there are three sizes this is the adult medium um, it has a negative ease so it's a tight hat but if you have a medium head and you don't like negative ease you can just make the large um, it's got a little bit of a slouch to it, not a lot. It would be super cute with a pom-pom. I don't have any pom-poms, but, um, this is how I will wear it. I like tight-fitting beanies. I'm not a loose hat person. I'm not a super slouchy hat person. This is about as slouch as I'll usually get. So, um, alright, it is several hours later. I did not realize that my that I'd been talking for an hour and my memory card was full so I had to offload the videos um, delete them on the card and here we are so my kids are now awake and I'm gonna have to wrap this up pretty quickly which is fine because an hour is a long video anyways so I know I was talking about my hats they're now available they are professionally tech edited by Fiat Fiber Arts. She did a great job. I was very happy with it. I had three people test the medium and large sizes, and they were able to help me kind of fix a few things to make the pattern more clear. So it should be good to go. And so yeah, that's the Oh Yes hat, available for $4 on Ravelry, and it matches the Oh Yes cowl. So that's it for design time. Let's move to Let's Chat. So I'm going to kind of cut this real short. Um, dye day. I keep talking about dye day. So we organized a dye day. I say we, but Lori, my mother-in-law, is the one who organized the dye day at her house. Um, about, I'd say there was a gathering of like five of us, I think, maybe. Because there was my mother-in-law, her sister, and yeah, six or seven maybe. Uh, mostly we dyed roving. Um, I don't remember what kind of roving this is. Uh, Coriadale cross, maybe? I think. Some sort of Coriadale cross. So I showed you the hand spun from earlier um, out of the same roving but in a different colorway. Uh, we hand painted these braids. So we pre-mixed a uh, dye stock. Like a quarter teaspoon of dye to so many cups of water with vinegar. And then we used syringes. We pre-soaked the, the roving and then we used and then gently wrang them out and then squeezed. We had syringes that we used to drop the color and kind of paint it on where we wanted. I struggled a bit with that because I didn't want to squeeze my roving to get the excess water out so it was already full of water and then the dye was mixed with water which added more water to the mix which meant the dye traveled a lot more than I wanted. So um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that method but it was really really fun. Um, so this braid has like blues and reds and it gave me purple in a couple areas. Uh, we didn't have a purple dye so the only way we could get purple was by mixing it and I really like the way that this one turned out. It's very, um, I don't know. A lot of, when I posted this on Instagram a lot of people were telling me to name it galaxy-like names and it's not quite really dark enough to fully be a galaxy thing. It's more of like 
uh, more pastel than you would think for like a galaxy or Cosmo, but I still really like it. I think it's going to make really nice yarn. I also dyed up this one. I did not intend to create this color. Um, Emily was out with me when I was dyeing this one up and she just grabbed a couple colors. I had started with this dark one, which is spruce, and she, I think, wanted blue. So we ended up with this like turquoise in there. And so then I tried to grab um, some kind of uh, gold ochre maybe to kind of blend things out. So um, I added some of this gold ochre to kind of tie it all in, and I think it ended up very seaweed-like, uh, but I think it'll turn out good. And then this last one, I struggled. I wanted to do a gradient of like a deep dark blue to a very light blue, but you can tell it's splotchy and not super gradient, and that's because of the issues I had with the dye traveling more than I wanted it to. So overall I had a fun time at dye day. I'm really happy with the roving that I got and I have to say this is the first time I've ever dyed roving without even slightly felting it. This isn't even slightly felted uh, and I think it all comes down to not messing with it when it's hot. So we hand painted them, wrapped them in saran wrap and then microwaved them. So I made sure not to open the microwave packs until they had completely cooled and then um, I didn't rinse them so they still smell like vinegar. Oh yeah, so I didn't rinse them, I just, they, so they still smell like vinegar, but I did put them in my washer on the spin cycle to get a bunch of the excess moisture out so they would dry faster, and I'm really happy I did that. I'm really happy with the effect it had. Although I have been warned that that might not always not felt it, so I'm wondering maybe if the braids aren't completely cooled that will felt it? I'm not really sure, but I did it and it, they didn't felt, and... I like the results, so I'm excited about spinning those up in the future. And then um, Fiber Fusion. So Fiber Fusion is a fiber festival in Monroe, Washington at the Evergreen State Fairgrounds. I'd never been before. This was my first year, and I'm trying to hurry up because the kids are awake and they just keep coming in and out. This is why I can't record without help. Um, so real quick, what I got at Fiber Fusion. I got some glow-in-the-dark beads from Bead Biz, and I'm really excited to use these in a design in the future with some unicorn blood. This is Schmutzarella Yarns Unicorn Blood. It's a really, it's an off-white. It's, it's like a light, a very faint grayish color on this white. Um, and I think they're just going to go so well together. When you put the glow-in-the-dark beads on, they're almost the exact same color as the yarn. Which for me, the whole point for this design is kind of a hidden image. So it looks nice and dainty on its own, but when it glows in the dark, maybe something a little spookier. So um, I still haven't fully fleshed out the idea. I've been sketching some things, not super in love with anything yet. And I haven't had time to actually work on it because I've been trying to do the hollow web design, so. But this is in the works. So I got the beads at Fiber Fusion. And then I also picked up some fiber from Schmutzarella. So actually, since I've last recorded, she sent me a braid of fiber to test spin for her. She hasn't really dyed a lot of fiber. Uh, Nancy of Schmutzarella Yarns, uh, she dyes her fiber slightly differently than other dyers. So she just wanted to have some people test it up to make sure it was, you know, up to standards. So she sent me a braid. I can share pictures um, of, this is a Targi Bamboo Silk Blend, and it's got, um, it's in the Pumpkin King colorway, and I spun it up two different ways and knit some swatches and gave it back to her, and I had no issues spinning it whatsoever, and I really enjoyed the base. So when I saw her fiber debut at Fiber Fusion, I made sure to pick up this braid. Now this braid is the same base. This is 80% Targi, 20% Bamboo, and 20% Tessa Silk. And this is in her But It's the Pelvic Thrust colorway. So for Halloween this year, she put out a full series of colors 
uh, for the Time Warp from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which I've never seen, but I've kind of heard the Time Warp song and seen some of the dance and um, seen the pelvic thrust. Uh, <laughs> but I really liked this color the most. The whole line of colors that she did kind of spans the rainbow, but it's got this mottled black look to it. And this one, I believe, is the blue, but it kind of breaks pink. I don't think she added pink. I think when the dye breaks, it leaves this pink behind. So I'm really excited to spin this up and possibly weave with it. So that's the other thing I wanted to mention. I have gotten my hands on a loom, a Dorset 20 inch floor loom. It's not a big floor loom because it's only 20 inches wide, but um, it's similar to what is now available as the shocked baby wolf pup. So um, I'm really, really excited about that. My mother-in-law um, ended up I guess maybe inherited would be the right word. Um, two of them, two identical ones. So um, she is keeping one and she so graciously gifted me one. They're at her house right now because we're currently following the floor loom weaving craftsy class together. I got some yarn from my stash and had to buy some new stuff to go with it and started warping the yarn at her house this last weekend. So it's gonna be a slow process because we're doing it together and we don't get together all that often and the setup takes a while and when you're learning it's even slower but and this is a big project for this class they have you do a five yard warp with 180 ends so it's 18 inches wide five yards long so that you can weave three different pillows and I, it's a big project so that you can learn a lot in one warp. So it's exciting for that, but also it's kind of daunting your first warp, or at least for us. We're like, well, this is a big, big dressing. So I'm really excited to learn more about weaving and get into weaving and um, using hand spun for weaving. I'm really excited for that. And I'm so excited about my new loom. I can't believe it. Uh, I don't think I could have ever afforded one of these looms, so it's amazing to come across one uh, and that my mother-in-law is so generous. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, and then, oh, I actually I'm missing one thing because I got distracted about the weaving. Uh, after we went to Fiber Fusion, because because it was so far away for us to drive up there, I want to say an hour and a half or two hours or something like that, we stopped by Tolt on the way home. So Tolt is a yarn store in Carnation, Washington. It's a cute little town. We stopped and had lunch there at a barbecue place not too far from the yarn shop. And um, this is my first time ever going and it's a beautiful little shop. I couldn't resist taking this yarn home with me this yarn they had it knit up into a hat and I don't have any black hats and I'm not a fan of working with black because it's so dark it can be hard to see but I love black and I love wearing black this yarn is a little different because if you look at its core maybe I'll get even closer its core looks like it's a chainette and this black is only a fuzz halo in and around the chainette so this yarn is wolf folk uh, my lights too bright luft and i don't know if it has a colorway wolf folk luft color l6 it's 109 yards for 50 grams and it's considered a bulky i think it said bulky oh here we go 55 percent ovis 21 ultimate merino i don't know what the ovis 21 means but it's an ultimate merino trait with the little trademark um and 45 percent organic pima cotton one percent of profit on wool yarn goes back to ovis 21 so i don't know what that means i'll have to look up that up but the t the tolt tag says bulky so it, i mean it looks bulky i got two of these so i can make myself a hat i wound one by hand because my i don't my ball winder broke and so I have to wind by hand until further notice. Um, I was going to start crocheting a hat. I was going to design a hat. And then I decided, mm, 
So I didn't like the way this was crocheting up, so I've decided I'm going to knit a hat instead, and I really don't want anything fancy. I want this yarn. I mean, it does enough on its own. I want it to just be like an everyday hat, so I think I'm just going to do a one-by-one one rib for the whole hat. I think I will be the happiest with that. And, and I didn't mention this stuff is so soft. This is like unbelievably soft. That's how I ended up buying it. Like, first of all, I love its appeal and I loved the sample, but then when I picked it up, that was game over. Game over. I just rubbed it on my face for a long time. Even in the car after I bought it, I pulled it out and I was just like, you know, fondling yarn like you do. So, <laughs> uh, yes, very excited about this purchase. Um, yeah, I better hurry up and end this before my son comes in here like 10 more times. So, uh, I do plan on being back. I'd like to say consistently. I found that this Tuesday morning is working for me the way with my new schedule. Josh switched jobs. I don't think I told you guys that, but um, back my last video, I knew things weren't going to be consistent because he was trying to change jobs and was waiting to hear back, and we didn't really know where he would be going, what kind of schedule he would have, which obviously affects my schedule. So um, he has a new job. He works Monday through Friday, which means we get the weekends off as a family. I do work Saturdays, but um, we do get Sunday together, which we never had a day off together for almost two years. So um, that's really exciting. I get a lot more family time, and uh, I've really been enjoying that. But... Yeah, so we'll see. My goal is to continue to get up early these Tuesday mornings and be able to put out a video. Also, I want to start putting out videos that are like more of a deep dive on one spe specific topic. So if there's a topic that you would like to know more about um, or would like to hear me speak more about, let me know and um, I'll definitely take that into consideration if it's a topic that I can speak on. I can't speak on everything, but the things that I know well, I would love to talk about. Um, if I don't get any suggestions, I'll just start putting out what I can, probably starting with the dog fur stuff, because I have been told um, that so by some people they think that's interesting. So yeah, I better go. Happy crafting! Bye!